So let's start with Di. Thank you, Di. And I'd like to introduce Di. Di is a member of Women's Liberation Aotearoa. She is a founding member of Mana Wahine Korero, which is a newly formed indigenous group of Maori women speaking out against gender ideology. Mana Wahine Korero and Women's Liberation Aotearoa have formed a partnership in the spirit of Te Tiriti o Waitangi. E te tuatahi me karaki e tātou, o te rangi, o te papatua nuku, o nga tūpuna, my ancestors who have gone before me. I offer up this prayer and ask for strength, courage and guidance. Strength to remain true to our kaupapa, courage to always stand in the light of the truth and guidance so that our messages and words will reach their mark. This I humbly ask you. Amen. Would you please tell us about yourself and your activism and what issue currently concerns you the most? I'm Di Landy. I'm from Women's Liberation Aotearoa as well as the founding, one of the founding members of Manawahine Kōrero. And we're formed to fight alongside everyone else of this, um, you know, the colonising that's coming through, through the legislation. My, my concerns, uh, Articles 1 to 9, are just being stomped and crushed, and whenever anyone speaks up about them, they're sanctioned. The, um, Article 9 is the one I will concentrate on tonight, and that's for the protection and the rights of the child. But I've done a bit of activism, you know, protest outside the... Department of Internal Affairs, leafleting in hospitals and stickers going around putting all the leaflets in women's clothing and um, supporting other, like when the sports petition went in, I supported that. And I've met with Nicola Griggs. Uh, Jan Rivers kindly invited me along to meet with the Human Rights Commissioner. So, yes, we've been doing quite busy. But um, and I think, along with Rex Landy, the best thing we ever did is shut down the Rainbow Reading Time in Kapiti. And um, they they were on a national tour, and heaps of emails, heaps of Facebook interactions, and OIAs and all sorts, and we still didn't get our answer. We were asking if the performers had been police vetted, and it wasn't until we pulled out the Local Government Management Information Act, that it was then canned. So that was Rex Landy and myself. So like I said, I'll be um, talking to Article 9. How does the issue which concerns you, um, which is the rights of the child, uh, how, that you were talking about, could you tell us more about that and how does this affect, well, women's and obviously women's sex-based rights includes children's rights and what can be done to uphold the rights of women and children? From June 2020, from the Independent Child Monitor of New Zealand, there's over 6,000 children in state care. 59% of them are Māori and 10% are Pacific Island. With all these bills changing, with the conversion therapy bill and the birth, deaths and marriages bill, along with the hate speech law, and then on the sides we've got the adoption and the surrogacy, these, particularly the conversion therapy and the birth, deaths and marriages, is forcing, together they are forcing social and physical medical experimental transition like at the moment you can socially trans early really early here I've heard as young as two years old at the toddler stage and and the government's teaching this now this is through all our schools so I personally don't think it's much of a stretch to think that there's 69 percent of state children will be put through some form of, oh gosh, some of this gender ideology. The problem for me is that through my Māori lens, nobody's born in the wrong body. We're exactly who our tūpuna called for. 
And so what this leads to is it waters down and colonizes our culture at its very roots. So in essence, this gender ideology is weaponizing our culture to suit the Western narrative. Mm. So this is very harmful. Um, and all these practices, like I've said, it's the opposite. Māori women are warrior queens. Freedom of speech is really important to us and we will not be silenced and we will not have our tongue tied by the state. Because mm. when I talk about this colonising, and I'm talking about systems and the state and it is forcing it on our children. Where do we send our children when it's the state teaching this? I um, 16 if you want to go work in the mine because it's dangerous. 16, if you want to go on a fishing boat. 16 is the age of consent for sex. 18 to vote, 18 to drink, 18 to join the army. But they're saying they can transition our children as young as two and then have all that um, auxiliary stuff, the binders, the packers. None of this is true through my Māori lens as well as or my Pākehā lens. It's a very, very dangerous movement for all of us. But as a, you know, I don't like to see my Māori culture trivialised and watered down inside out as um, an organisation that is offering advice. It's along with the Rainbow Tick. And I know of a young teacher, who a Māori teacher who's in bilingual school and Inside Out came into them. And this was only last week with this indoctrination. And she left. And But what she did find out is that they've been trying to access called a kaupapa. Now, for those of you, that's full Māori language teaching. So, yes, it's spreading. And so, you know, I'm, I'm glad we're all here fighting for our cause. But it's just really terrible to see the undermining and the watering down of our culture. And I'll end on this, thank you, Janet, is that this isn't the first time us natives have been fooled. What, what are your suggestions for the future and what can we do to going forward to protect women's and children's um, rights and um, uphold the rights in the Women's Declaration? Oh, um, everything yeah. we're already doing. And if it, you know, if we didn't have COVID, Janet, my first answer would have been, we're going to have to take it to the street. Yep. Because of the global media blackout. But we've got yep. COVID, so more, gra you know, yep. we've got to get grassroots, keep, keep the pressure up. We've just got to keep building the pressure and keep that pressure up. And, you know, that's by lobbying, that's by letters, that's by submissions. All that tedious mm. stuff everyone's been doing, and yeah. you know, so but as soon as levels go down, that's right, you know, take it to the streets. And yeah. I personally believe we're going to have to, um, because politically, I just I, I lack faith that this will be halted mm. and, and the current form at the moment, and and you know, my sadness. Janet, you know, with the culture and the manaki tanga and for knowing a tanga being stripped of Māori as the state will take control. Mm. And, and that's, you know, this isn't the talk around the marae. In, in 18 months, I've been on five marae, and the only mm. time this gender ideology is spoken about is if I bring it up. It has not been heard of. So, mm. you know, the consultation's only happening at a very, very high level. It's not coming down to grassroots. Mm. And so, you know, that's that's my challenge to, to the government and the public service, not to us, because we're doing everything we can within our power. And, mm -hmm. you know, in solidarity, sisters, keep up that pressure. Mm. 